Hello, welcome back to the Fish Locker Workshop. I'm now going to go through how I tie my shock leaders on. Now this, this subject is heavily open for debate and some people will swear by one not where other people will say that that one doesn't work and they'll use another one. The one that I've found that I have confidence in. Now it isn't, it isn't the most complicated and um, I dare say it's probably not the strongest but it's the one that I use, the one that I find that I can tie it well and it's the one that I've caught some great fish on. Now all it really is is two uni knots. I will show you um, tying it between two pieces of mono and I will also show you I'm going to tie it onto one of the boat reels to use tomorrow. Now fishing from the shore Usually on one of my reels I've got 18 pound mono. If I'm casting if I'm casting five ounce or six ounce leads, I want a 50 pound or a 60 pound shock leader because generally you use 10 pounds of weight for every ounce that you're casting. So to join the two, all I generally do, you take four or five inches of each line past the other. Now this is supposed to simulate going up to your rod tip all I would do is you take your 50 or 60 pound line and make a loop over it. Same as you would start your uni knot, you see from the uni knot video, there's your first loop. And then I would go through it three times. That isn't as many times as you do with a uni knot. And as you start to slowly slide it down, stop when you get to there right that's that's a uni knot three times through with the heavier line around the lighter line now you take the lighter line which is coming from your rod tip and go around the heavier line and this time I'm gonna go six one two three Four, five, six. Yeah. Slide it down so it tightens up just a little bit. Wet both of them and just slide them towards each other. When they get close to each other, all you do is you, you're holding both tag ends and both lines. So this is the line simulating going to your rod tip and this is the one that's going to eventually go to your trace. And you just ease them tighter and then again ease them tighter so every single time you're just tightening them up and then when you get to a point where you're quite tight I get hold of the heavy one give it a tighten give hold of the lighter one give it a tighten now pull them together like that Get your heavier one. And there is your knot. Now, it's not the neatest. And when you are using heavier lines, sometimes you will hear it going through your, your rod eyes, your rod rings. But if you practice it, you can get them relatively small. Snip the tag end off close. Snip the other tang end off close. There is your knot. Now that's relatively strong. You will you will struggle to get it the strength of the line. So as this is 18 pound line, this knot will probably break before it gets to 18 pound. It might, if you're lucky, it might be 16. But I find it's enough. I find it's a decent knot. Yeah. Three turn uni knot with the heavier line, then a six turn uni knot with the lighter line. I'm now going to show you the same thing but with braid and mono. 
Now, on my boat reels, I'm not using it as a shock leader. I'm using it as what's called a rubbing leader. And that being because, because I'm going to be fishing in pretty snaggy, pretty rough ground, braid doesn't do well with snags. As soon as it's under tension, if it touches something sharp like a rock, just pins, just breaks. It, it, braid is not good at abrasion resistance. Mono is better. So all I generally do is I will have, say, six to eight feet of mono at the end of my braid. It also, I find, gives a little bit of stretch. Uh, anybody who will have been fishing with straight through mono on the reel, whenever you get snagged, you'll find that you can probably drag in six, eight feet. That's the stretch of the mono. Braid doesn't stretch. So if you're fishing for hard diving or hard fighting fish like Pollock, having a little bit of stretch is always a good thing because it's a little bit of a safety net for you. Same as before, the heavier line over the lighter line, making a loop. Now go through three times. One, two, three. That's a three turn uni knot, and then I take the braid, and this one I will make an eight turn uni knot. The mono I only did six, but the braid, I do, braid I'm doing eight. I always find you can get away with a few more with braid because, in effect, it's like cotton, isn't it? So, right. Four. Right. The braid will tighten down quite quickly. Be careful not to tighten this down too much before you've got all of this lining because if you tighten this down and you try and pull the braid through, the braid just cuts through the mono. So slide it up, tighten down, slide it up, tighten down. That there is now quite tight. So I'll get hold of both of these ends. So I'm going to pull in three directions. I'm going to pull this way, this way, and down with both of those. There. Take off your tag end close. If you didn't take your tag end off close and it was like that, all that would happen is weed would catch on there, it would catch going through your rod rings, every time you wind in it would get stuck, it would, all you want to do is you want to get it as tight as you can, like that. And with your braid, you should really use some type of braid scissors because sometimes when you try and cut, it just mashes it. So. I generally give it four or five mil. Like that. And there's your knot. And like I said, I like about eight feet. So I'm gonna wind eight feet onto my reel. That was three feet. Six feet. And there we go. That's now got a 40 pound rubbing leader on. As you can see with all of my other reels, again, a rubbing leader with the same uni to uni knot. And there again, uni to uni knot. As I said at the start, a lot of people will 
have a preference. This is all this is. It's my preference. I prefer this knot. Um, this does me fine for, I would say, small to medium sized fish. Um, my conger reel has this knot on and I've landed 50, 60 pound eels with this knot, obviously just with heavier line. And um, well, there we go. If you have any comments or you want to ask any questions, just give me a, give me a message.